This is Zoho One. Zoho One is a all-encompassing uh, business platform. Uh, now they've got 40 plus apps. I don't have all of them turned on in here, um, but just to go through some of them, you get an idea. You've got Analytics uh, Assist, which is like a Team Viewer uh, version. Uh, books, which is an accounting software, campaign, CRM, connect, click. So connect is like Zapier. Uh, click is like Slack. Check out is like a little payment gateway. Um, desk is actually quite quite good. It's like a ticketing system. Uh, documents like doc, Dropbox, um, workflows, forms, inventory, marketing, invoicing, uh, webinars, all that sort of thing. There's so much in here, it is ridiculous. Projects, um, HR, uh, all, all uh, ridiculous amounts. So I guess the, the thing to think about with Zoho is that because it does so much, um, it can actually replace a lot of the things that you are doing uh, disjointedly in across five or ten different apps that you're using in your business. So rather than having a you know, a Slack, for example. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the bottom here, but there is a small bar here, which is uh, a smart chat. So Slack version is now where everybody works. Instead of having everything reporting to Slack and you having to have Slack open as well, um, it's embedded in every part of the of the business. So whether you're in the CRM, whether you're in the, the projects or, um, or any part of the business, really. So one thing I really want to focus in on is is, is the CRM. 70% of Australian businesses don't have a CRM and 95% of businesses that implement one experience benefits. So the CRM is really uh, about tracking the, the, the customer relationship and understanding you know what's happened, who they are, how they work, uh, uh, where they're at, any notes that are up against them. Um, you can see I've got a list here uh, and we've 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 segment, segmented them down from leads, contacts, accounts, deals, and vendors. So for me, leads is anyone I, I need to establish who they are. You know, they're not going to become a, a, a qualified lead straight away. So we need to do some things first. So we need to capture some information. We need to uh, understand who they are, um, how we met them. Uh, are they even remotely qualified to do business with us? Do they have enough? Um, money to, to, to pay for the services? Do, is their business big enough to use the product or, or service that I'm offering? Um, so I'll click into this one and we can see that I've got uh, the lead owner which is me uh, I know who they are, I've got their business name, uh, an email, a phone number uh, now they didn't turn out to be a junk lead just because uh, it wasn't a good fit um, so probably one of the best parts in the sales process is weeding out people who are not a good fit. That way you're not spending your time on everybody, uh, just the people who are a, you know, for all intents and purposes, a good fit. So uh, we've got a lead status, we've got some other information here. Uh, if I scroll down, there's a section for some notes and I've written how I met them. They have a design firm, uh, but they're not right stage of business and it'll be a very long time before they are. So I'm just going to take them out of my process. Uh, I've also got any attachments, products that they've bought, uh, open activities such as a, an event, a phone call, that sort of thing, uh, and then emails. So I've got a history of communication with them. Now that pulls in from, um, from I've got it pulling in from Outlook, even though this does have a mail system, I prefer to use Outlook. If you've got a Gmail, you can do the same. You can have all your emails copy in. Uh, it's trying to map across a Facebook page and a Twitter page. Uh, any events that I've invited them to, I can, uh, which an event can be a meeting, um, a screen share, something like that. Uh, Zoho Desk, that's for the, the ticketing system. So if they become a customer and you want to put them into a, uh, a help desk kind of a process, then you can do that with knowledge articles uh, and automate some of that process. In campaigns, you've got a, a section where you can actually identify the cost of acquisition uh, how you found them. So if you run an event, you got 50 names. Now you put them all and you register that campaign up against um, that. You register the cost of the campaign, uh, uh, sorry, of the event that, that cost you to put it up together. And then you determine how many sales come out of that event. And then you can attribute whether that running that event was actually profitable or not. I can send an email. I can convert uh, from you know one area to another. 
uh, and then I've got um, you know what what's help, happening elsewhere, what's happening in uh, these other platforms. This is basically just a short list of everything that's that's down here. So in contacts, there's anyone who's gone from a lead to a contact. I'm oh, sorry, before I do that, I should go back into leads. Um, now in leads, I do have this uh, workflow here. So here I've got not contacted, but I have confirmed. So I've already taken one step. I've confirmed who they are and, um, or oh, sorry, their contact details. In this point, just a note, an email, and a phone number, and that gets me to this section here. So with not contacted, I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to click establish contact. Once I've established contact, um, I'll then be asked to put in some notes about that person. Once those notes have been done, say, uh, if I just put in some random notes there, this will change to the next stage in the process. Uh, that's part of the sales workflow or the, the, the blueprint that is associated with this, um, this lead process. So if I go into the blueprints here, you can see I've mapped out a process to identify um, who is going to be a good lead, a bad lead, not qualified, or should we progress to the next phase. So at the start, I want to gather their details. So I'm going to collect, I'm going to make notes compulsory because I, I don't want to forget you know, three months down the line if it takes me four months to, to close a client or six months to close a client. I don't want to forget who they are because I'm going to be talking to a lot of people. Um, if I need to create an attachment, I can make that mandatory, which I actually do in the, um, the proposal phase. I'll do up my proposal and then I'll attach a copy in here. I want to make sure I've got their email and their phone number so that I can contact them. And here is a, an attempt cycle to try and attempt contact. So if we can't get through, then um, that, that will just go around and around and we can just schedule the next task automatically. So if there's no answer, um, after I've attempted that, I can create a task and that task will be to follow up at a certain date and then there's, I can assign it to a person. Then um, once I've established contact, if I can't contact, they're a lost lead um, after a certain number of tries. Uh, if I can contact them, I need to have a bit of a conversation and identify if they're a bad lead uh, or if I need to contact them again, someone says I'm not ready for three months time. Then I want to put that task in so I make sure that I follow up with them in three months time rather than hoping for the best. Then um, once I've contacted them, my goal is to try and do a demo. So once I've done a demo of the software, um, that will get into this section here. And then from there, from the demo, we'll either identify that it's not right for their business or it is. Uh, and if it is, um, you know, I've got three demos that I can complete. So if I go into here, um, demos conducted, and there is a form of validation in there. Uh, there are three demos that they could uh, complete. So they need to uh, be completed. If demo one is complete, then they'll go, I could set up an automation where they go in bucket one. Uh, or if demo two is complete, they go in process two. If demo three is complete, they go in process three. Uh, and then that, you can have different um, systems for each of those. Then in the pre-qualified, so they've done the demo. We know it makes sense for their business. We know that they are interested. Uh, if not, we can set a, rem uh, a delay reminder or something for, for when they're ready later. But at least we know that it's going to be right for their business. We know that they're the right kind of client that we want to work with. And we know that uh, they have the money to pay for the services. So then I'm going to put together a quote. And in that quote process, um, there might be some negotiation that needs to take place. Maybe we go through the, the, the scope. Maybe it's the price. Um, and then once that's occurred, and you can set rules around that too, particularly if you're going to delegate it, you can set a limit on how much uh, discount someone can give. Uh, then we're going to go through an approve or reject. And then there's different things that happen in those cycles as well. Uh, and it doesn't go any further than that in my scenario, because once they're a lead, um, they, uh, sorry, once they've gone here, uh, got down this far, they'll either get converted to a contact if we get to... Um, you know the demo and we decide that it's not right for them but we want to keep uh, information and understand who they are. Um, if they get to uh, the quote phase and they are closed one then they will become an account uh, and then we'll have a deal so the deal progress will, will start 
Um, I have vendors. Vendors is where I keep all of my referrers uh, and potential, you know, people that can bring me business that I think would be a good uh, a good network to have. And so I can understand who they are and and save notes and and set tasks so that maybe I might send them a bottle of champagne or something like that. Then uh, I can have a look if I've got a sales team at all of their activities. Uh, I can do it in Kanban format and find out what they're doing um, at any one point. Uh, reports. I can pull certain metrics. I can understand who the best salesperson is. The average sale duration, how long it takes for a lead to become a, um, a closed one deal. Uh, and then I've got um, various other stages, so quotes, sales orders, purchase orders, invoices, etc. Now the beauty of this is that it integrates with so much. So you've already got all these details. And then if I want to go through to, say, projects, for example, I can uh, convert the client into projects. And uh, from within projects, uh, I'm now viewing projects from within the CRM and any kind of project information is saved up against that contact record so you know uh, what project they're in you can quickly click across you can understand um, what that what needs to happen with them uh, in the in the CRM all of that information is stored there um, now going back out to here uh, you know we talked about desk it's a help desk system now I find help desks you know that you can even either love them or hate them, but it's a way to uh, delegate the work that you're doing. And one of the most important things is this here, and it is the, the knowledge base. That's where you can put uh, a knowledge article on how to do uh, certain things. So it might even be for your, for your staff that who need to understand how to best serve or answer that customer's question, or it might be for the customer where instead of your staff spending, you know, an hour or half an hour writing an email with a length, lengthy um, description, they can simply send a, uh, a knowledge base article which has, you know, maybe some images, um, some links, maybe some video, and then they can um, understand step by step, you know, step one, step two, step three, how to do the certain thing that um, that they basically answer their question. So um, the other thing that you can do with the tickets is that the history, again, is stored back in the CRM. So you can see what problems they've had, um, identify areas uh, for improvement. And if I go back into the uh, whole project, um, all of it links together. So now when your documents are stored, all of your, your staff documents, um, they can be found um, up against everything else. Because it's so tightly integrated uh, with all of these other apps, you're getting the same things that you're getting elsewhere. You know, you might get uh, a Asana, but you go the paid version. You might get um, Slack, and you might have uh, Dropbox, and you, you have to pay uh, pay for it. Sorry, Dropbox there. Then you might have Zendesk or or uh, Freshdesk or something like that, which is a, a ticketing system. And you, then you might have uh, Marketing Hub, so you might be on the paid version of um, Active campaign, or you might be on, um, you know, uh, Mailchimp or, or something like that. Then you might have Cognito Forms. Then you might have GoToMeeting. Then you might have, um, uh, you know, a, a website builder, DocuSign, for example. Um, it just keeps going and going and going. And none of these systems really talk all that much, or more to the point, one speaks French, the other one speaks German, and then you've got someone in the middle who's translating, but there is a loss of information because they're just not, you know, they're, they're, it's lost in translation quite literally because they don't fully talk to each other. The next thing is, um, you know, all contained within this, uh, it, it may not be uh, perhaps, you know, from the project management side, it may not be as pretty as Asana. It may not at face value seem as user-friendly uh, when really it's actually got a lot of depth to it and probably more so than most of those others. Um, you can build a lot of customization into it. You can have um, subtasks, you can have attachments. Sure you don't have a little checkbox there that gets rid of them and send, has a little pop-up notification. But your chat feed is here so uh, all of your communications are in context. They're right there when you need it. 
um, you don't have to then flick over to another app. Um, you've then got an, an ability to have all of this stuff pop up in the in the uh, the CRM. You're not jumping between systems. You don't have to uh, enter the information four times. It's it's one way to make sure that um, all of the information is captured. Um, everything is where it needs it. You can manage your permissions uh, a lot easier without having to worry about 50 user licenses. You just have one employee, one user license, and then you turn things on or off within it. Um, it's, it's much simpler to do. You do have the ability to do uh, tasks, um, your, your milestones, uh, your start and end dates. And if you go into uh, the reporting side, um, then you've got a whole bunch of um, uh, reports that you can do, such as your uh, Gantt charts, and um, and that allows you to really get a, a full in-depth understanding of um, how to of, of what your timeline is, of um, where people are at in the in the progress, what your resource utilization is. Um, are you on track you know, with your plan versus your actual timelines? Um, getting reports to make sure things are getting ticked off and people are actually doing them. Um, and then having your documents which are all can all be stored somewhere else. So without having to, you know, if you've got a Dropbox and then you're linking Dropbox files, uh, but then there's uh, version control issues, someone saved something else. Now you can save a whole folder to the to the project um, and then have it sit in your um, your equivalent elsewhere. You know, your finance, you might track time in here, you'll add the client uh, and then have all of that time tracking information turn up in the invoicing um, yet to be invoiced uh, information. You can have your, your milestones, any issues that relate to it. When you're in your task, you can um, have a bit of a, a, a biography sort of thing on the actual project itself. Um, so if we go into this one, this is a demo. Uh, you've got this project description. So anyone who logs into the project can understand a bit of the background on it before going in. Particularly handy if you've got remote staff working from somewhere else uh, in different time zones and different locations that need to understand what you understand but can't attend the sales meeting with you. So um, now you've got a bit more reporting over all of the, the task history. What are the top five issues that are holding the project back? Um, you know, weekly digests, upcoming events, task progress charts. Um, you, you've got all the reporting that you need to have. So the next thing to remember with Zoho One is that because it's all inclusive, there's a lot of extra stuff that you can do. Um, you can grow with, uh, for example, Sales IQ that puts a thing on your website and allows you to. Um, see when people are turning up to your website. It allows you to put a little chat application in which usually sits around the bottom there uh, and helps you to have a communication or have a chat and you can have a bot even uh, to start the conversation but you can communicate with people that are on your site. You can identify if they're re returning from uh, having been there what more than once. You can identify the pages they've landed on. You can have a communication, uh, you can have a chat with them about the page that they're on. And maybe even um, you know get them to respond and engage them while they're there. Um, you know I've got the app on my phone and I get a notification when someone's been a returning visitor. Um, I've also in the CRM app I can leave voice notes. I can uh, snap a photo of a business card and have it turn up, and then all the information is synced across the system. So um, I guess there is a lot to it, and there's more than what um, what I can show in this video. But certainly. Um, it's more for that business that has maybe uh, five or more staff that need to, um, you know, you're starting to have people challenges where you can't just sort of sit down and show, all right, well, there's this problem here and that problem there, and, and this is a workaround for jumping between this system and that system, uh, and everyone's just got to know. Now we're making the system a, uh, really sort of intelligent and connected, and um, we're we're making that uh, that interconnectedness between all of the information um, or data points so that we have a much better picture of the customer, particularly around that CRM side. Um, then you can integrate it with other systems that you're using that if you really if you really do love them, like um, Outlook or even if you are using Slack, you can have notifications pushed over there. But it's better to do as much as possible in one place 
Um, again, you know, we don't want to go for the shiny app syndrome where, you know, this one looks better. I like the way it flows better. Um, what you really need at scale is real function and power and minimize your double entry and minimize your data loss. Uh, if you bring, you know, those, we, we talked about the five other apps, you know, if you had Asana, uh, Trello, um, maybe you might have um, Slack, you might have, um, uh, what's another example? You might have uh, another analytics platform, maybe Hootsuite or something like that. And all of a sudden you're paying for all of those user licenses and you're paying for um, someone to either learn and jump between and, and have that downtime and switching problem when they're trying to learn new interfaces and you're also having that issue of uh, having to manage where the information is you know sometimes they're not updated between two platforms um, so you don't always have the most accurate version there is a cost to that um, and for a relatively similar cost or even less, um, you can get into a system like this uh, where everything is connected. Um, you know, at, at face value, uh, it looks confusing, but um, at, and it looks like there's a lot in it. But really, it's the same thing you're doing elsewhere, but in one place, and it's all simplified uh, by being together. And you'll find that you'll save staff time, you'll save uh, in between time in tasks, and you'll get a much better outcome. Um, for your customer at the end of the day. Okay, so that's all uh, for my demo of Zoho One. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you. Bye.